Are your students having problems staying awake in class? Are they uninterested in what you have to say and look like they'd rather be anywhere else but in your classroom? Well, maybe it's time to switch things up and try the 5e lesson plan. The 5e lesson plan is a teaching model for educators to develop student-centered, inquiry-based teaching. Let's meet two different teachers. Our first teacher is Mr. Mao, who does not use the 5e lesson model. And our second teacher is Mr. Bueno, who effectively uses the 5e lesson plan. Mr. Mall has been teaching for a short time period now, and he uses the classic lecture your kids for the entire class period every day until they're so bored they can't keep their eyes open method. Now, let's jump over to Mr. Bueno's classroom. Mr. Bueno uses the 5E lesson plan in his classroom regularly, and he's ready to show you what it's all about. The 5E model comes in five parts. The first part is engaging your students. This part is quite simple. Find a topic that relates to the lesson, whether it be a funny story or talking about something they see every day to engage your students and grasp their attention. Because, of course, to have an effective lesson, your students must be first cognitively active and listening to what you're saying. The second part of the 5E lesson plan is exploration. Give the students something hands-on for this part. Allow them to gather their own data and draw their own conclusions instead of just giving them busy work and definitions to copy. Allowing students to explore the lesson for themselves instead of just lecturing to them is important because students learn best based off their own experiences with the physical world and social interactions help facilitate learning. It's a good idea to have students work together accordingly instead of by themselves. All of your lessons need to be student-centered rather than the teacher regurgitating information back to the students. Activities using manipulators and tools stimulates their senses and gets the brain working. Let's see what Mr. Hall's classroom is up to now. It seems as if he's lost the attention of all of his students. Everyone's got a front row seat on the struggle bus. That's unfortunate. Now let's look at the third aspect of the 5e lesson model, explain. This part is a bit tricky because a lot of times teachers want to lecture over what the students just explored, but the teacher must be careful to keep lecturing to a minimum. This is a good time to ask probing questions which allow students to explain for themselves what they just explored and what their conclusions were. Their past experiences are used to explain new terminology and concepts. An open conversation such as this leads to peer analysis and further discussion amongst the class that can allow them to learn from each other's mistakes and successes. Now let's check back in with Mr. Hall and see how his students are doing. Oh great! Now he's copying a definition on the board verbatim and that's extremely original. Meanwhile, it seems he only has the attention of one student who is copying the word down. I think, oh wait, no, he's drawing a Pokemon? The fourth part of the 5e lesson plan is elaboration. The elaboration phase deepens the understanding of the students by using the same concepts they just learned and explore and explain by using them in new situations that are meaningful to the students. Similar to the exploration, students can make observations, collect data, and make decisions while testing ideas and hypotheses. This is a good part of the lesson to introduce different encoding strategies so that students can encode this information in their long-term memory. You can use the strategies such as imagery, organization, analogies, and mnemonic devices, just to name a few. I know it's painful to watch, folks, but let's jump back over to Mr. Hall's classroom. Look, he's about to hand out a test. The students heard the word test and are wide awake now. Some are texting their moms to come pick them up, and others are asking their neighbor if they have a pencil and a piece of paper. They're panicked, so unprepared. Mr. Bueno's class, on the other hand, is asking questions, and students are actively raising their hands and engaging in the conversation. Lastly, in the 5e model, is the evaluation phase. This phase is a little more confusing because although it's listed last in the processes, this part happens throughout the lesson. 
The evaluation phase is what the teacher utilizes to keep students on task and focused on what they're learning. Teachers can ask probing questions like, how did you get that answer? What if I had given you this different situation? How could you use this same method to get an answer in this new context? Teachers can utilize their own tools such as an activity sheet or exit slip to gauge how well the students were able to learn, retain, and apply the material. Class is almost over in Mr. Hall's room and students are taking the test. Some are just sitting motionless, staring at the paper. I can only imagine that the majority of the students are not doing so hot considering Mr. Hall did not engage them in the lesson or check in on their understanding as he lectured on and on. So, in the end, Mr. Bueno's students excelled greatly with their lesson because the 5E lesson model utilized many different aspects of student learning. The students were able to create their own experiences, work in the social aspect, apply information in a context that was meaningful to them. They were able to construct their own knowledge instead of the teacher telling them what they should know. Mr. Hall students failed epically, epically, because, well, he never stopped talking, ever. The 5E lesson plan wants your successful students and successful teacher. Try it today.